On November 28, 1966 the first Soyuz rocket blasted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, beginning a remarkable 50-year history that saw it become the, the default vehicle for international spaceflight. The Soyuz rocket's development was ultimately a result of the Soviet Union's desire to keep its foothold in the space race. When U.S. President John F. Kennedy announced his intention to send a man to the moon in May 1961, the Soyuz rocket was the Soviet response. It would, as we now know, outlive all other spacefaring rockets of its era. The rocket was developed in the early 1960s by space engineering firm OKB-1, which at the time was headed by Sergei Korolev. The decade before, Korolev had designed the world's first intercontinental ballistic rocket, the R-7, and this had already formed the basis for the development of the Vostok rocket, which carried Yuri Gagarin into space in April 1961. From Vostok, he would create the Vosgod and Soyuz rockets, both within the space of five years. This period also saw the development of two cosmodromes, Baikonur in Kazakhstan and Plisetsk in northwest Russia. Korolev died in January 1966 and never saw the Soyuz rocket in operation. His creation was groundbreaking, especially in the way it launched. As a rocket uses up fuel, empty compartments create dead weight, so Korolev and engineer Valentin Glushko developed a three-stage launch process, enabled by a five-booster formation that lends the Soyuz rocket its distinctive flared shape. During liftoff the four outer boosters consume their fuel, then detach when they are about 40 kilometers above ground, leaving a central core booster to carry the rocket upwards. Shortly afterwards, the protective shield around the payload and the second stage rocket are both jettisoned, leaving the third stage, already 170 kilometers above Earth, to continue firing. Once about 220 kilometers high, within low Earth orbit, its last engine detaches and the Soyuz spacecraft continues towards its destination. It wasn't long after its development that the Soyuz rocket was put to the test. The US had already achieved the first docking of two spacecraft, one of which was unmanned, on March 16, 1966, and the Soviets were not to be outdone. But their first docking attempt would end in tragedy. Colonel Vladimir Komarov launched on the Soyuz's first manned mission on April 23, 1967 and was to dock with a second spacecraft, but complications caused the mission to be aborted. Komarov attempted re-entry, but his spacecraft's parachute failed to deploy correctly and he was killed as his capsule plummeted to Earth. The next attempt occurred on October 25, 1968. Georgi Berejevoy managed to get within 200m of his target, but was unable to dock. This endeavor was finally achieved on January 16, 1969, when Soyuz cosmonauts accomplished the first docking between two manned spacecraft, Yevgeny Krunov and Alexei Yelisayev passing from their spacecraft into another helmed by Vladimir Shatilov. Soviet ambitions increased and so did the power of the Soyuz. On November 24, 1970, a Soyuz L rocket carried the Soviet's lunar lander into low Earth orbit to prepare for a mission to the Moon. The Soyuz L featured reinforced boosters to carry the lunar lander and, although it made only three flights between November 1970 and August 1971, its design influenced the Soyuz U rocket, which still serves the International Space Station to this day. The Soviet space program continued to expand with the Soyuz rocket at the center of its ambitions, but tragedy was not far away. On April 22, 1971, a Soyuz rocket transported three cosmonauts up to Salyut 1, the first space station of any kind, but they couldn't enter due to a fault in the docking unit and the mission had to be aborted. Docking was achieved on June 7, 1971 during the follow-up Soyuz 11 mission, but a malfunction during the return trip to Earth at the end of the month led to a sudden loss of atmosphere in the descent module, killing all three men aboard. Cosmonauts Vladislav Volkov, Georgi Dobrovolsky and Viktor Patsayev had been protected against the chill of space, but not depressurization. The disaster meant all future missions would require cosmonauts to wear spacesuits while in the spacecraft. 
In July 1973, cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov visited NASA's Johnson Space Center in Texas in preparation for Apollo Soyuz, the first docking of spacecraft from different countries. The metaphorical, and literal, shaking of hands between the two Cold War superpowers was a milestone for spaceflight. The docking module was a combined US-Soviet effort, and each crew had learned the other's language. The Soyuz U rocket flew its first manned flight on December 2, 1974 as a trial run for the Apollo Soyuz mission. Developments and upgrades continued throughout the decade, but a rocket with a history as long as the Soyuz cannot be without its hitches. Commander Vladimir Tidov and Gennady Strekalov came within seconds of tragedy on September 26, 1983, as they sat in the capsule atop a Soyuz U rocket preparing for a mission to service the Salyut 7 space station. Spilled fuel was to blame for the spacecraft erupting in flames, burning the control cables to its automatic ejector escape system. Mission Control manually activated the escape system, firing the spacecraft and its passengers four kilometers away from the towering inferno mere seconds before it exploded, saving the two cosmonauts' lives. Unshaken, the Soviets continued to send the Soyuz U rocket into space and it would eventually deliver Expedition 1, the first resident crew to the International Space Station, on November 2, 2000. Another major milestone in spaceflight history occurred in July 2011, when the American Space Shuttle fleet was retired. From then on the five space agencies behind the ISS, NASA, Roscosmos, JAXA, ESA and CSA, have used Soyuz rockets to fly crews into orbit. On October 21st in the same year, ESA launched a Soyuz STB rocket from its spaceport in French Guiana, the first to be launched outside the former Soviet Union. Since its inception, the Soyuz rocket has been at the heart of space exploration, its durability a testament to Korolev and his team. That it would one day become the go-to vehicle to carry both cosmonauts and astronauts into space would have been beyond Korolev's comprehension. Yet the Soyuz rocket has become not just a symbol of ambitious Soviet engineering or of Cold War technology, but of a united humanity, exploring the stars as one.